I assume you're ready to get to work on this. Come in. Hello. Reason why I drink number 48. <laughs> yes, I knew it was you without looking up. I said you were going to memorize the sound of my shoes moving across the floor when I gave you a tour on the first day. Obviously, I would be capable of the same thing with all the saps that answer to me. You're sure? I have my doubts that you even remembered the names of all the forms I expected you to have. I don't have much faith in you. If a detailed instruction manual on how to complete your income tax return isn't self-explanatory enough. Seriously, a donkey could do what you need help with today. Don't you have Mr. Halloran's time to waste with this? Couldn't you have just called an employee at H&R Block? What? You don't even know what H&R Block is? Jesus Fuck. Oh, this is my life now. I'd rather be spanked and spat on. Save it. You can wax poetic about how you have more faith in my wisdom than anyone else all you want. It's not going to change how much of a pain in my ass this is going to be. Now stop stalling and get out your laptop. Understand this. I am only helping you with your 1040 form. That is, your personal income tax form at the federal level. You can shine my shoes with your tongue if you think I'm going to help with your state taxes. And you sure as shit are on your own if you have other forms to complete for whatever circumstance. Are you ready? Good. Now, go to irs.gov. At the top, you'll see forms and instructions on the right. Hover your mouse over it, and you should see Form 1040 and Form 1040 Instructions. Download both of them. I want you to learn how to read the stupid manual, so I never have to talk about this with you again. TurboTax? <laughs> You don't know what H&R Block is, yet you know that TurboTax is an electronic service that can help you with taxes. Well, newsflash for you, my thrall. We're not using it. That shit costs money that you could put towards buying yourself a business jacket that actually fits you, and that I could put towards sponsoring research by women who deserve much better for men, even more desperately than me. Dr. Angela Jekyll... Dr. Christine Marshall... Hmm. Of course you don't know who I'm talking about. The only named doctor you can probably think of is Dr. Phil. Point is, we're doing this the old-fashioned way. Deal with it. <laughs> Print? What for? To fill out these forms with a pen or a pencil? <laughs> What kind of a millennial are you? Don't you know there's a way more efficient method for this? Please, for the love of God, tell me you have Adobe Reader installed on your laptop. Okay, good. You're not completely hopeless. Go to your Downloads folder and open up both of the files you just downloaded. I-1040GI is the instruction manual, which we'll be using, but I want you to focus on F-1040, which is the form you'll be filling out. They're both PDF files, so they should open with Adobe Reader. Now, hover your mouse cursor over one of the text fields and click. <gasps> you see? These forms are compatible with Adobe Reader in such a way that they allow you to <gasps> type what you need to put in each blank space. So now you can just type all your personal information. No need to write it for fear of making a mistake. So you can fuck up as many times as you need. Yes, 
You never knew it could be that simple, huh? You're learning so much today. Oh, you're so cute when you're stupid. <clears throat> All right, get to it. Name, address, social security number. Thank God I made you look that up before we started doing this. Oh, and be sure to check single on the filing status. <laughs> Bitch, please. As if I'd believe you were any other status that implied you are or were married. I know it, and you know it. <laughs> Who are you kidding? Oh, and don't even think about checking that presidential election campaign box. I will physically stop you from contributing our money that we give you to something like that. And these politicians are all bought by billionaires, don't you know? Let them pay for their own campaigns. Oh, and guinea pig? Bad luck for you. You have no dependents, so no child tax credit. And trust me, the IRS is way tougher on people filing single with no children. Also, ignore the lines on standard deduction and age-slash-blindness. You weren't born before January 2nd, 1955. You aren't blind, and no one can claim you as a dependent. Not even me. Unless you'd like to be another one of my pleasure slaves that I can punish in front of a crowd of haughty elves at a party. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Jokes. Hey. I gotta amuse myself somehow throughout this. <sighs> All right. Playtime is over. Now the real work begins. Focus. First, did you print out your 2019 W-2? We emailed it to you back at the start of February. Good. Now, see how that paper has four copies of the same information? And that's because each copy serves a different purpose. The one at the top, labeled copy B, look carefully at the end of it. It says, to be filed with employee's federal tax return. So when you send this form in the mail, you need copy B of your W-2 in that same envelope. Here are some scissors. Take care of this now while we're thinking about it. Now, on your W-2, box 1 should say wages, tips, other compensation. Type the dollar amount you see there, since included, in the blank space for line 1 on your 1040 form. You can see how line 1 is labeled wages, salaries, tips, etc. Attach form W-2. Honestly, this process is self-explanatory. I think you just needed someone to motivate you to get started. Anyway, line two is split into two parts. This part has to do with your bank account. Your bank or credit union should have sent you a 1099-INT form. That was one of the forms I told you to bring with you. Good. Now, look at box eight. It says, Tax-Exempt Status, which is line 2A on your 1040 form. So... That's the amount you'll type there. As for 2B, taxable interest, you'll put the amount shown in box 1 of your 1099 form, interest income. Line 3 deals with investments in the stock market. You told me you had two mutual funds, so they both should have sent you a 1099 DIV form. If you look on the back of both 1099 DIV forms, they even tell you what to do with each box on the form. <sighs> Don't any of you millennials have an attention span for reading directions anymore? See? It says for box 1A, include this amount on the ordinary dividends line, a.k.a. line 3B of form 1040. And box 1B is clearly labeled Qualified Dividends. So naturally, you put that in line 3A of Form 1040. Of course, you'll need to do that for all your mutual funds, 
so you'll need to add up the totals. Oh, good. You kept your TI-84 from college. Your math instructor was doing you a favor when she required you to buy one. Oh. Not sure if you have to provide a Schedule B or Schedule D? Look it up yourself, kitten. Type Schedule B into the IRS's search engine. They make it easy for you. There's the page you're looking for. It says, use Schedule B if any of the following applies. And none of those bullet points apply to you. What? The uh, second last one? No, you're not a nominee. A nominee is someone acting on behalf of an entity. You represent nobody but yourself, little mouse. So don't worry about Schedule B any longer. Hmm. Not much else of note here. You're not retired, so lines four and five mean nothing. As for line six, capital gain or loss, that's the totals of box 2A of your 1099 DIV forms. And no, a Schedule D is not required to attach, so check that box. They explain the circumstances in the instruction manual you downloaded, but I'll just tell you up front, or we'll be here all day. No Schedule D is required because all your capital gain distributions have been accounted for on your 1040, on line 6. Ouch. You're really hurting yourself by dragging your feet on starting a retirement fund while you work at our firm. That's thousands of dollars you could be hiding away where they'd be tax-exempt. Would really put less of a strain on your taxable income. But alas... Add up all the lines thus far, and that's your total income, on lines 7B and 8B, since you have no negative adjustments to your income. In fact, the only break you get is the standard deduction that everyone gets. And once again, you get screwed by not being married with kids. You only get to deduct $12,200, whereas you could be taking away as much as $24,400. So type 12,200 in lines 9 and 11A, and subtract 11A from line 8B. And that's your taxable income. One page down, one to go. Huh. All this fuss about taxes. And here we have line 12A, which straight up just says tax in bold letters. Here's where you'll need that I-1040GI document. Again, if you're using Adobe Reader, you should see a bookmark menu. Click 2019 Tax Table. It should take you to page 62 of the PDF file. Now, you see the table in the upper right corner? It explains how you'll calculate the taxes you owe based on your taxable income. You can see how you have to find the range you fit in. For example, you see how 2651 is circled? That's if your income is at least $25,300, but less than $25,350, and you're married filing jointly. So, get to it. Scroll down and find the correct range that your taxable income falls under. Then look at the column for single, of course. And there you have it. So put that number in for 12B. And since you have no child tax credit or other taxes like self-employment tax, just keep that number from 12B and type it in line 16. That's your total tax. Now, here's what will make or break your day. We need to find out what tax credits you can claim to reduce the amount of tax you owe. Again, you're a simple creature. No American Opportunity Credit, no Earned Income Credit, nothing. All you have going for you is your federal income tax withheld. Well, I already saw your 1099 forms, and they all said zero for federal income tax withheld. So your only hope is your W-2. Pull that out again. I believe it's Box 2. 
Don't show it to me. I don't need to know. Type that dollar amount in line 17 of your 1040, as well as line 19. Okay. Look at line 19 and line 16. If line 19 is more than line 16, the IRS is going to give you a refund. Subtract line 16 from line 19 and put the difference in line 20. If line 19 is less than line 16, you owe the IRS money. Subtract line 19 from line 16 and put the difference in line 23. You're going to have to do the rest yourself, kiddo. That's classified information I can look at. If you're getting a refund, you'll need to provide your routing and account number for your bank or credit union. Call them and ask them to provide that for you if you forget. And if you owe the IRS, look at page 58 of the instruction manual. It says go to irs.gov slash payments for more information. Yes, pay online. Kid, do you seriously want to put a money order of, I don't know how many hundreds or thousands of dollars in an envelope that could end up wherever, for all we know? That's what I thought. Anyway, save this PDF file, then print it, sign at the bottom, put the date, and ignore the third-party designee and paid preparer use only. You didn't pay me jack shit to help you with this. But trust me... I'll find a way for you to return the favor, one way or the other. Oh, and finally, the address of where to send your 1040 form with your W-2 attached? Go to the last page of the instruction manual. There's a table showing addresses based on what state you live in and whether you're enclosing a check or money order, which you won't be doing. So ignore the last column on the right altogether. And that's it. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome. Now get out of here. I need a break. Unless... You'd be willing to help me come? You are cute enough. And you're certainly enough of a sucker. If you put up with my attitude this whole time. And besides... Don't you owe me a favor? <laughs> <laughs>